Hello again, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox, and welcome to another installment of my surf fishing video series. After my last set of videos on gear and whatnot, one of my subs suggested that I do a video on plugs. I mentioned that that would be a very broad subject to cover, and that there were already some very good books on the subject. So here's a plug for my friend Zeno's book, The Art of Surf Casting with Lures. It's available everywhere online. Instead, I decided that I will do some videos on some of my favorite plugs, the modifications I do to them, and some of the variations on the ways that I fish them. I will also sum them all up later on a video called the 2x2 Matrix that will discuss how I choose my profiles and why. So let's get the disclaimer out of the way. The information provided on this video is based solely on my own experiences and should not be considered the be-all and end-all of fishing. It is intended solely to stimulate thought, provide direction, and encourage experimentation in the sincere hope that it may be of help to you on your surf fishing journey. End of disclaimer. These days, there are an enormous amount of plugs for fishermen to choose from when it comes to loading their arsenal. But instead of filling my garage with plugs, I've reduced my choices to a select handful of tried and true profiles that have consistently produced over the years. Most of the plugs I use have an optimal set of conditions and profile sizes that suit them, and I'll be explaining this in detail in a future video called the 2x2 Matrix, a simplified way for choosing your plugs. For now, I just want to focus on a couple of specific plugs, the conditions I fish them under, and the modifications I make to them, as well as a few variations on the way I fish them. This video will focus on the Bomber Long A and the Bomber A Salt. The Bomber Long A has been around since the late 70s, and I'm not really sure when the A-Salt came along. Let's take a quick look at the differences between the two. Both are floating minnow-shaped bodies with plastic lips that allow the lures to dive to depths between 2 to 4 feet. Both have rattles inside their front chambers, one of the features I really like about them. The Long A has three hooks, the A-Salt has two. Lastly, the A-Salt is a little larger and a little heavier than the Long A. Let's look at the modifications first. The long A out of the box is almost useless for catching decent sized predator fish that like minnow type baits. The hooks are small and weak as are the split rings that hold them to the body. A 20 pound striped bass has little problem mangling the hooks and getting free. So long A's have to have these components replaced. I typically replace only the front and rear hooks and leave the middle hook out, but you can include it if you wish. I replaced the split rings on the nose and hook hangers with Roscoe stainless steel 1000-3H 65 pound heavy duty split rings. If I replace all three hooks, then I use VMC 1-aught 6X strong treble hooks. When replacing only the front and rear hooks, I move up to the VMC 2-aught 6X strong treble hook. For the A-Salt, I replaced the split rings on the nose and hook hangers with Roscoe Stainless Steel 1000-55H 100 pound heavy duty split rings. I replaced the front and rear hooks with VMC 3-aught 6X strong treble hooks. If you need information on how to swap hooks and split rings, then check out my surf fishing series video, Replacing Hooks on Plugs. So let's talk about these two bomber plugs. They have been favorites of mine for a long time simply because they catch fish. I personally believe the sound of the rattles has something to do with their fish catching ability. And I have a couple of variations on the way I fish them that make the most of those rattles. They also have a nice tight wiggle that gives off a good deal of vibration. Bombers, like most hollow minnow body plugs, are not great casting plugs, so forget about using them in a headwind. Having fished Long Island for 40 plus years, I've tended to use them in the bays more than in the ocean, but they definitely do see ocean usage at certain times. For colors, it's always pretty much the same for me with most plugs. Yellow, white, black, or blue. Blurple's okay also. If I think baby weak fish are around, I'll throw gold. If I think mullet are tight in the surf, I'll throw a blue back over silver body. But other than that, it's yellow, white, blue, or black. In the ocean, the best conditions are light wind or wind at your back and low surf. They don't dig deep, so larger waves just wash them over. And like most plugs, the backside suck of a wave is the best. 
They're also great in a rip if you can find one. In the bay, they're good any place you have current and don't have wind in your face. Let's talk about retrieves because this is where it gets interesting. There is an old adage about retrieve speeds for striped bass that says something like, go slow, then go slower. And it's no wonder why people who follow this have so much trouble catching striped bass. These bomber plugs are not made to be retrieved slowly. They're not made to be ripped through water either. Their best action is with a moderate retrieve in water with moderate current and a slightly slower retrieve when strong current is present. You always want to feel the plug working so that you know those rattles are rattling and doing their thing. There is one situation where I use a very slow retrieve, and I'll get to that in a bit. So current has everything to do with how fast you retrieve these plugs, and most any plug in general. Most times when I'm fishing in the bay, I'm fishing moving water, usually channel edges, but it can also be flats adjacent to channels that have water moving over them. The rule of thumb is that the closer you are to an inlet, the more water is going to move. The only still water is typically way back in the bay, and that's generally not where you want to be. So how fast is a fast retrieve? You'll have to figure it out for yourself. When I experiment with a new plug, the first thing I do is stand in water that has current and let out a little line and drop the plug in the water and see what it does. Do you feel it vibrating through the rod as it wiggles back and forth? Try letting out a little line and then retrieve at different speeds to see what the plug does. How does it feel? How deep does it dive at different speeds? Get a feel for it first and then go fish with it. One thing I do with bombers, no matter where I fish them, is I give them the shaky shake. This is how it works. As I've mentioned before, I'm very fond of the rattles on these plugs. I believe they have really good fish calling ability. So to get the most out of them, I do this thing called a shaky shake. Now, I'm fishing on the pond on my property, so it's going to be a little bit weird because there's no current on it. Now, I hold the rod much like you would be um, if you were fishing from a boat, so it's kind of under your arm and the rod tip is pointed slightly downward. And then on the retrieve, what I do is I shake my hand slightly. If you watch, it's kind of hard to see, but I shake my hand back and forth as I'm retrieving. Now, I'm retrieving at a speed that I'm used to retrieving at with current, but seeing that I don't have any in the pond, it's, it's kind of slow. But if you look at the butt of the rod, you can see that it's going back and forth. Now, I'm going to change the angle of the camera so that you can see the rod tip and see how much it's going back and forth on a retrieve. And again, you don't have the benefit of any current to, to put a bend in the rod, but if you look, you'll see the rod tip is kind of bouncing back and forth. That's kind of the tempo of the, of the shake that I put on with my hand. And that's basically... Um, you know, like I said, the rod is under the arm, the rod tip's pointed down toward the water, and you shake your hand on the retrieve, and that adds a whole bunch of extra um, rattling to the plug without destroying the wiggle of the plug. And that's pretty much the shaky shake. It works for me. It definitely catches more fish. There's a variation of the shaky shake that I do with a very slow retrieve, or almost none at all. On really dark new moon nights, I will sometimes cast cross channel, and as the current swings my bomber in an arc, I'll alternately shake it several times as it floats on the surface, and then stop and let it drift for a few moments before repeating the process. When the plug swings all the way into shore, or wherever I've waded out to, I reel the plug in moderately slow against the current, just in case there are any followers, and repeat the process. The hits are so sudden it usually makes me jump. The last variation is the backward shaky shake, and there are only certain places suitable for this maneuver. You need to be able to walk out to a channel edge. You then cast down tide along the channel edge, and close your bail. You slowly walk with the tide with your rod extended out in the direction of the channel. You pull your rod up tide while shaking the plug and then let it drift back with the tide. 
Then you repeat it again, over and over, as you slowly walk down the channel edge. There's something about a fish struggling to swim against the tide that makes bass crazy, and that's what the backward shaky shake does. So that's my version of the Bomber Long A and the Bomber A salt, the modifications I make and the way I fish them. Some guys like to load them so they can cast farther. Others like to add bucktail to the rear hooks or add 3D eyes, whatever. The point is never be afraid to experiment and think outside the box. That's my view from the beach. So until next time, be well and catch him up.